they had a friendship. I don't know why they friendship fell out. They friendship was before Diddy, I mean, before Biggie and Pop. So I don't know why they fell out. I know every girl that Tupac had, Puff wanted and got. So, all right, what happened was is that uh, I guess Pac had got whiffed that Jay-Z was in town. Well, you know he gonna do a show because Jay-Z, he doing a show. But you gotta realize Jay-Z had became an enemy of Pac because I think he had said some or uh, was gonna do a song with Big or whatever like that, the whole nine yards. So Jay is now Pac enemy. So it was just good business just to chill out with that. But they was trying to chill out the whole thing. They had a big meeting and Puff wouldn't send a representative or let uh, Zip or Chaz represent him in the meeting. And, 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 and then it came out. Jane Deal, Diddy's former bodyguard since the Biggie era, alleges an FBI link between Shannon Sharp, Diddy, and federal authorities. He asserts that Diddy has long been an informant and that Sharp has now stepped into that role. Let's unpack the details of Diddy's immunity regarding Tupac's murder. Said that Diddy, he was jealous of the relationship between Tupac and Big, and he also went on to say that Diddy, he wanted to be friends with Tupac, but Tupac wasn't interested. Diddy and Tupac was friends at first, bro. I remember the time me and uh, Diddy rolled up to Pac in, uh, I think it's the, what's the name of that club? The Roxy. There was some kind of concert going on and they was talking and everything. They had a friendship. I don't know why they friendship fell out. They friendship was before Diddy, I mean, before Biggie and Pop. So I don't know why they fell out. I know every girl that Tupac had, Puff wanted and got. So did he have uh, jealousy? Yeah, he had a jealousy of Pac. But I think that it was more so that he knew Big was the meal ticket. And that Pac wanted Big to be with him with Thug Life, but he didn't have the money at the time. And when Big gave him, got the money from Puff, Pac gave him the blessings to go with him, but he also told Big that he had to watch Puff because Puff was going to rob him blind. So you believe Kirk Burroughs when he say that, you know, Diddy, he was jealous of the relationship between Tupac and Big? I don't know if I could say he was jealous with his relationship with Big. I just, he didn't like Pac. It's something that happened between Pac and him that he didn't like it. So if my man or somebody that I'm working with is dealing with somebody I don't like, I'm going to have a dislike for that relationship they have. I don't just think it's jealousy. I think it more was just a dick's like and a hatred that somebody I'm working with is working with somebody that I don't like anymore or I got a problem with. So you feel like it was intentional when Diddy was getting with, you know, the same woman that Tupac already had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, it's a, I think it was, I think that he purposely went after the girls that dealt with Pac. Why you think he did that on purpose? Because when you have an envy of someone, remember Puff tried to get that Juice movie and Juice, but they gave it to Pop. So when you have an envy of somebody, if you can't beat them, the closest thing you could do is have what they got. Have what, have what they had or try to get what they got. Yeah, that makes sense. And Kirk Burroughs, he also said in this interview that Diddy, he would encourage Biggie to make songs that was beefy. I don't think Kirk Burroughs was correct on that because Biggie didn't write around Puff. Big always wrote wherever he wrote at and then went to record. If he wrote anything or came up with some kind of concept of something, you're not going to find 
too many times Big and Puff was in the studio together where Big was recording. Puff may come in after the work is done and then add his little, take that, take that. Bad boy, bad boy. But Big always record, cause like when we were doing the, uh, the music to uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Big said, I ain't writing shit. You sat there and smoke up all that weed. And he waited till he got to New York. And then came back with the song. Flipped their whole style. Big didn't ever write around nobody. Looked like Puff had no. Puff never, you know, told Big what to write and what not to write. It's easy to see why law enforcement might turn a blind eye to Diddy's misdeeds in pursuit of bigger fish. His status as an informant isn't a recent development. It's a case of following in familial footsteps, if you're familiar with the backstory. What's the story behind Jay-Z being afraid to come out his hotel room because of Pac? All right, what happened was is that uh, I guess Pac had got whiffed that Jay-Z was in town. Well, you know he's going to do a show because Jay-Z, he doing a show. But you got to realize Jay-Z had became an enemy of Pac because I think he had said some or was going to do a song with Big or whatever like that, the whole nine yards. So Jay is now Pac enemy, too. So Chaz Williams, who was over Black Hands, Black Hands was one of the labels who did that uh, Black Gangs, every artist in New York on. And Chaz, who is now getting into the music business, uh, has become a music executive. And he was once a former gangster who was on uh american gangster bet because they had it down had them down for robbing 161 banks that's what they put in their program and everything but chaz was a gangster in new york city that became a music executive so he gets a phone call saying that jay is not going to come out the room because tupac friend <laughs> so he's not going to do his show can he make some phone calls you understand to um, get Pac off the bullshit. So I think he may have talked to Big D and Big D and Eric B called Suge and Suge was laughing saying that wasn't him because they tried to make it seem like it was Suge that was doing it, but it was Pac. So, um, so I guess Suge called Pac, Pac let him go ahead and do his show and everything like that. But Jay was scared to come out of his room. So that story was really true about Jay Z being afraid to come out his hotel room. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, no, yeah, he was scared. Probably still is scared. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, man. And Shook, he told Pac to chill out. Yeah, Shook told Pac to chill out. You know what I'm saying? Because see, they was trying to. So you got to realize is that it was going to call a dissension because they were trying to start Death Row East Coast. And I would have been Pac, Eric B, and you know, sent all the dudes here in New York. So then they're going to have groups coming back and forth from Cali to New York. So it was just good business just to chill out with that. But they was trying to chill out the whole thing. They had a big meeting and Puff wouldn't send a representative or let uh, Zip or Chaz represent them in the meeting. Yeah, that's a wild story. Yeah, who told you this story, if you don't mind me asking? I was there. Oh, wow. Well, I didn't know that, man. I didn't know you was there. So you was there when Jay was scared to come out of his hotel room. I had no idea, man. I used to roll with Chaz every day, bro. And, 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 and then it came out. And then it came out. Somebody else told the story. But that, I, I think it may have been Dame Dash or something like that that told the story. A lot of my stories get out, man, but they don't believe when I tell them. They believe it when they hear it. While it remains unclear if Diddy directly ordered the hit, it's evident he had knowledge of it before it occurred. A guy named Damien, he's a former intern at Bad Boy. He said that, you know, when Diddy and Jennifer Lopez broke up, Diddy, he had staffers kept outside, you know, MTV, TRL studios with signs trying to win Jennifer Lopez back. You know anything about that? 
everywhere. See, what happened was <laughs> Jennifer had this personal assistant, and I don't know what she owed Puff or what Puff did for her, but he was able to call her and find out everywhere Jennifer was at. You understand? Um, she was somewhere, he sent a uh, hundred dozen roses and was trying to get Luther Vandross there to sing for her. So I believe Damien, cause I was there when he was making uh, deals with the personal assistants of Jennifer Lopez and finding out where Jennifer was going to be so he could send people over there. You understand? With gifts, roses, and all this other shit. Wow. So he was really trying to wear her back then? Oh, no doubt. No doubt, bro. She wasn't, she wasn't, she, she, they wasn't listening. You know what I'm saying? These guys is hard headed, man. I used to tell people, yo, when he was dating Jennifer, I said, y'all know private eyes was following us, right? PIs was following us. And PIs would be following, following, following us. And I don't know if Jennifer had the PIs doing it. I don't know if Benny Medina, somebody who had some kind of relationship with Jennifer, had private eyes following us to see what Puff was doing. Crazy, man. How you feel about Biggie Small reaction to the video? Her saying that she wanted to slap Diddy. Well, I think she wanted to slap him way before she saw that video. Big Mother wanted to slap Puff way before that. Because if you ever see her in anything that they ever gave for Big and Puff was there, she was always distanced to him. Because she probably believed after having that conversation with me that Puff played some kind of part in her son dying. Her son death. Because why would he lie to Big's mom and say he didn't know me when all the investigators, the cops told her, have a conversation with Gene Deal. Gene Deal gave us the information on what happened, what transpired. Why would did he tell her that he didn't know me? So she would probably want to smack his face way before that. That just gave her more and more reasons when he seen. Diddy didn't have a genuine feud with Tupac. Rather, he was somewhat obsessed with him. When you reflect on their so-called rivalry, it's quite peculiar. I know we're doing this old school taping again and release, but this is something I think y'all gonna really, really enjoy on this Sunday morning. It's a conversation with somebody that y'all love. Y'all love Mr. Gene Deal. And so this, I get a lot of conversations or I like, get a lot of requests in the comment sections. And man, y'all do, you and Gene need to do a sit down. You and Gene need to do an interview. And I'll be like, dang, is that we got that many new uh, people that's in the comment sections? Shit, me and John did one with him about four or five years ago. So we decided to put this audio up. We cutting it up because it went a little longer, but we cut it up for you guys. And we decided to put it out and let y'all conversation between Gene and I uh, uh, that we had answering a lot of the questions. It's not going to be no y'all here for P Diddy and Diddy bashing or or a conversation about that. This is not the interview for this. This was all around the surrounding uh, of the identification and the the Biggie assassination and Gene and I just talking it out like men. So hey, Sunday morning, drink your coffee, or this afternoon it ain't no good game zone, if, unless you're in the baseball. Give us thirty minutes of your time and I'll uh, watch this interview. I think you'll learn a lot about it, about where we have our differences at, but how people can have a differences and have a decent conversation. So bomb first, we'll be back at you later on the day, or definitely by first thing in the morning on Monday with some interviews because man we got a lot of things we're going to be covering this week that goddamn Keefy D getting built up that goddamn Wack 100 belling him out the 
Kendrick Lamar situation and all of that stuff. So peace bomb first. Check out the Jane Deal. Uh, a good friend of mine, a little guy that uh, you all know out here in the YouTube world, Big Gene Gill just called me, and he great bless us for a few questions and answers right quick. And so uh, we got Gene Deal from the Raw Deal Show. I know what his YouTube channel is because uh, he be doubling my my, pla- my little platform, doubling and triple. And y'all all know the the Cooking Master. <laughs> Big you Gene Deal. There you go with your boys, <laughs> man. <laughs> What's going this on, thing, man? This is Bob first, man. Talk to my people. My boy, John. I'm sure you heard of John. No, John. Let me say what's up to my, my, my people over here. Glad he asked me to come on because I don't mind doing that for him. So what's up, Reg? I awesome. appreciate it. Big Gene. Well, man, we ain't going to... You know, everybody know where you and I stand on the uh, on all the, the, the stuff that we are known for. So we just going to say what's up and, and talk and, and see what... Well, any anybody got any questions over there? I don't have no questions to ask you about that because I already know uh, your opinion and 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 it makes sense. It makes sense. I uh, and I understand why you feel that way. Uh, but but you know you know my opinion as well. So, well, you uh, know what, like Reg, you know, like can nobody tell me nothing but what I saw? And I've always been adamant about what I saw and what happened that night. You and I both know that when the FBI do their investigation, they do a thorough investigation. You understand? And uh, I was found credible and I told them the truth. You and I both being former law enforcement agents, we know if you lie to the FBI, you're going to get five years in jail. And you're going to get five years in jail. You know, so... um, I know what I saw. I know what happened. You got people coming 10, 15 years later who wasn't there, who didn't give the same statements I gave them I gave now. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not worrying about nothing, man. I, you know, I'm retired. I'm trying to live my life. I'm actually on vacation right now. You call me on vacation. So, you know, I'm just, like I said, I don't know how my time's going to be and I don't know when you're leaving. So that's why I'm here. So if anybody mm-hmm. wanna ask some questions, long that thing ask them I and some old dumb bullshit I answer. I ain't got no problem with that. Respect. Respect, man. Um Okay, so uh all right, let me hit I'll just hit up the board and see what y'all got from Big G. Uh okay, um no sure. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh let's say do you come on y'all, we know that Big G don't believe that Gucci was involved. Um, Gene, if you can just tell my people what what you believe, and um, just so they won't have to keep asking that question about Gucci and all of that, because I know what you believe, and um, if you can just explain out to the people what you believe, so they won't have to keep asking that question. I believe the same Muslim who walked up to me and puffed that you and I both know, and your man said that he saw the pictures, the pictures that they showed me the night. The, the day that they came to my job and we was in the hotel of uh, me, Puff, and the Muslim and his face was messed up. That same Muslim was the name, I guess the name is Amir Muhammad or Harry Phillips or whatever. Walked up to me and Puff Car. Five minutes later, he walked in, uh, and after he walked up to me and Puff Car, he walked in the direction uh, to the corner. I didn't see him no more. I didn't keep my eye on him. Lil C, when we got to the hospital, Lil C said a Muslim killed Big. And I said he had a, and I, it, 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 Paul offered, uh, one of the security guys said a Muslim, I said, yo, did he have a blue shirt, I mean, a blue suit, white shirt, blue bow tie, peanut looking in? He said, yeah, Gene, how you know? I said, he walked up to our car first. So that's the same statement I gave everybody. That's the same statement. I'm sticking with it, and I know what I saw, and I know what happened. Okay. Multiple incidents nearly led to armed confrontations between Tupac and Diddy. And you and I both know that when I said, if I'm wrong, and I I told you to tell Greg Caden, if I'm wrong, prove me wrong. Show the picture. He said they had the picture. Am I wrong or am I right, Rich? He said that on on our stream uh, that he had the picture. All right. So, you me wrong. I didn't get the picture, and um, I didn't get the picture. 
I got a right. picture, but you said that wasn't the correct picture. That wasn't the picture you were talking about. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So he knows the picture I'm talking about. Yeah. You understand? They know the picture I'm talking about. They showed me the picture and they told me, listen to me. And Greg Caton was had nothing to do with this investigation uh uh way back when in ninety seven when Correct. it came to my job. Right. You understand? Yeah. He had nothing to do with that investigation. The cops, cats, and all of them told me, we're going to fix the photo and bring you back out there or we be back out there in two weeks. Now, they never came back out there and they never brought me there. The next time I heard it was doing a deposition for Miss Wallace. You understand? So now, if they were interested in getting the, 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 the killer big, they had the photo. They had a law enforcement agent who said... He saw him walk in that direction. You understand? So now, if they was interested, they would have took care of that right then and there. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I got a question. Velcro East wanted to ask you. He said, could you ask uh, Big Gene if uh, Michael Clark Duncan was supposed to be the bodyguard of Big on March the 9th, as he claimed, or any story? Yeah, he, he made that up. Okay, <laughs> you made that up. Okay, you heard that up. I'm gonna give it to you a hundred. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know Michael. I know him before he went to. We went to Alcorn State together. Okay. He put a freshman on me, like trying to get at me, uh, because he's from Chicago. He used to mess with my, uh, my dude Maurice Bowling. Him used to be real cool. He had this freshman come at me, Tommy Tyre, and I had to put it on him in the lunchroom. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Big Game. Um, was Amir Muhammad, when did you first um, see the picture of Amir? What year did they show you that? That picture? They never, they never showed me the picture of Amir Muhammad. Oh, okay. So you never right. identified Amir Muhammad. They, ne they, they, ne they never showed me the picture. The, uh, they never showed me Amir Muhammad. The LAPD never showed me Amir Muhammad. Okay. Okay, that, so that should clear up a lot of question that people have that I'm seeing. Okay. Um, John, kind of help me with the board because it, it seems like people are asking good questions. Okay. And I don't want to miss them. Yeah. Somebody said, um, ask him why he didn't circle Amir in the lineup. I don't know. I don't know what that is. He just said he didn't never okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, See, listen here, man. Listen here. This is, this, this, they, this, they try to portray and, and the reason, you know, and Reggie told me your man, uh, Katie used to talk in the whole night. We don't need to talk because he blatantly told a lie. Mm. You understand? Mm. When he said that I picked out, I said, this guy just got to look like him, but it's not him. The one that Lil C's did, the, the, the facial structure mm. is not, uh, is not strong enough. You understand? It's not him. And I had a lawyer there with me. You understand? I had a lawyer, the Eloise nurse. She is the the governor's David Patton, one of her his lawyers. Mm -hmm. She was there with me taking notes in the whole nine yards. And she could attest to that I never picked nobody up out that line. Up. So when Greg told that lie to make his his program look good, you understand? That's why I cannot f with him. And Red, that's why I told you I wouldn't f with you. Yeah. You know, listen, me and you could, me and you had some good yeah, conversations, Greg. Yeah, you you understand? Know you, 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 you told you, you, you told me like, like, like you, you thought that that was Keithy D at the mall in the back of the Soul Train that you pulled your gun out on, and I told that was gutter. That was Keith Gutter. And ever since you know then, understand? I've been correcting that. If you've been watching anything, I, I say I correct it all the time and say, hey, right. you set me straight on that. And, and, right. and uh, yeah, because so, yeah, he, he wasn't with them like that, you know, right there at that particular time. Even but the whole thing did. about it is, man, a lot of people come here and they want to they, they want to take they want to they, they want to take information that people didn't do a good job with it when they first had it in the first place. And then they want to try to make it something like like I saw. Biggie was ensnared by Diddy's ambitions. While Biggie had his street cred, Diddy wasn't the figure he claimed to be. He sacrificed Biggie like a pawn in his game. That I talk about is that I know person and I talk about Pac. It's somebody who was with them. See, Kiki D ain't never tell y'all. It was some other guys with them who they spared off when they seen Pac them. 
Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? It was yeah. some other guys that was with them that they sped off when they seen Pac them. They said, oh, there go them niggas right there. Oh, yeah, we're going to go holler at them. I will right, we'll see y'all back. And they was right there when that happened. You understand? Yeah. So Kiki D know that. And Red, you know and I, you and I both know. I came to you, and you ain't tell me. I told you, I said, Red, you know there was two guns in that car, right? And he said, and the first thing you said to me was, yo, how you know that? How did you find out about that gym? I said, some of my people told me like that. Man. And they told me the situation. Well, that you said, yeah. He never got to pull those guns out, though. Let me just no, he that. never got to. Okay. It, 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 he never got to. But okay. if you if you know you're going, if you're going, if you're going to have a situation or something like that, and somebody make a move like that, and you got somebody in the back who's supposed to handle something, they're going to do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Point blank. Yeah. And then, you know, people try to get me to, yo, this conspiracy, this, that. Man, I know what my man told me. He told us that that night, and when he came back from Vegas, he he, he demonstrated what he saw to us. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And, he, and he got mad at me because I said his name. And I said, but don't nobody know who you are, bro. Yeah. I said your name, but nobody don't, nobody knows who you are. I never gave him a, a first or a last name. I gave him your street name. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, well, cool. Um, um, let's talk about KBD a little bit since we brought him up, though. So there is, there is knowledge that KBD was hanging around you guys, though, correct? Yeah, he was. You know, as I told you, I think he'd be on four or five, uh, even three to five occasions. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm just, you know, um, everybody acting about, um, if you can just explain to people what you always say about the DJ Quick, uh, about what the DJ Quick say, if you can just explain that to him over here. I know you probably have said it a hundred times, but listen, when we came up to the car, first thing before I even knew Big was, you know, hit. Tone said, come on, Gene, let's go. We hopped in the car and chased the dude for about two or three blocks. Well, we couldn't get at him no more. We couldn't get him. So we came back to the scene. Instead of me standing up there with Puff and them, I went down to the Peterson right in the driveway and I played the wall. Cause I know, and you know, people always come back to the scene or they have somebody around yeah. that's gonna say something or what's wrong. We yeah. know that as law enforcement agents. And as, as I was on against the wall, just chilling like I was, no, like nobody seen me, like, like, you know, just how you chilling against the wall. DJ Quick was on his cell phone. He okay. said, yo, I think they got one of them niggas. They said they was going to get them. Yeah, somebody from Bad Boy, I think they got shot. They said they was going to get some. They, they said they was going to get them. And as I'm going towards him, he's about, uh, I, I, you're talking about, uh, about seven, eight yards, I guess. As I'm going, as I'm going, as I'm going towards him, he's talking loud front. You know what I'm saying? I'm going towards him, and Paul comes and grabs me. Come on, Jim, what you doing up here? We gotta go, we gotta go. We finna get, you know, we finna, you know, take Big to the hospital. Cause the ambulance never showed up because it was another incident on the other side of the museum yeah. that the ambulance and the fire department was there. So, you know, whoever did it, you know, they saved that real well. You know, and, and I still think that it wasn't nothing from, it, it wasn't no gang members. It was, it, it, it was a planned hit, bro. It was a planned hit. So that's why you think law enforcement was involved because of the planned hit? Well, I think somebody who has some professional uh, experience on what they did and how they did it, because they had to what? First of all, we're there at the Peter Museum. They try to, do, you know, people try to say that uh, it was a drive-by. It was never no drive-by. You the guy was parked that the whole night. Yeah, you understand? So that means that the cameras on the PD Museum and the cameras across the street and the cameras down the block know that that car and they saw that guy come back and forth in and out of that car all the time. You understand? Right, Way before those shots even went off. Let me you ask you this. Let me ask you this. And this is where I always get confused at, and I think you're about to clear it up right now. Well, I want to say first, if it's a plan hit, have you ever heard of any law enforcement? During a confrontation between Diddy and Tupac, Diddy bolted, leaving Biggie behind. Biggie should have recognized Diddy's tendency to flee when the heat was on. 
their own personal car. Yeah. No, nah, I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think know I ever mean? had. But you know, preacher had a mean dude with him that was doing all kinds of crazy. <laughs> and he was law enforcement. <laughs> My point is, the guy that they say is law enforcement in the, is David Mack, and they try to say David Mack, and and and. My point is, well, why would he use his own personal Impala car to, to do a drive-by shooting in? That just don't make sense on a player. It wasn't a drive-by shooting. Well, okay, a shooting from a car. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we want to take the plates off and, and what your car it could be anybody's car, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the other thing was, okay, so you said the guy was sitting down the street in the car the whole time but then you also said the guy came and looked inside of the car uh the moving guy the tall guy so you're not saying he was the actual shooter you just think he was coordinating this well like i said i didn't i did not see him shoot big i said he walked in the direction and, and where big got shot at and Lil C said a muslim shot big and I said with the blue suit, white shirt, blue bow tie, and he said they, they said yes. So that's what I came in at. Okay. All right, y'all. So right. y'all getting it straight from this? You know, I'm I'm trying to ask y'all all the stuff that 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 the over here that y'all have questions about, and he he's answering it um, straight up, y'all. So, um, yeah, John, you see something else? About for big things that I see a whole bunch of stuff, but I want to maybe mm. talk about stuff they can answer about. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Let me just read this. If it was a right. planned attack here involving police, well, officers, I, well, just, just, just listen, just listen, Red. Okay, so, first of all, where's the footage from the museum? You understand? That museum had cars that cost millions of dollars. They knew that a black urban magazine was going to do a party there. Mm -hmm. That means. To me, they're either going to beef up security or beef up the cameras, make everything working and all that stuff. This happened on the corner of the museum. It wasn't even uh, uh, 20, 20 feet from the museum. It's from the, cur it's from the museum wall to the curb. You understand? It happened right there. So you want to tell me they don't have footage? You want to tell me across the street didn't have footage? You want to tell me uh, 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 down the block around the corner don't have footage? Come on, man! What happened to the what happened to the footage? Yeah. Why would you, you think? The police, but why would you think the police wouldn't want to solve this case? Well, think of first. Think first of all, Red, is if if that if they did have individuals, not who did it, but had a part to do with it or played any kind of part in that. Big was at the time was worth four hundred million dollars or better. Mm -hmm. That that lawsuit and all of that didn't come up until five years later. Right, but still at all, you got to talk about his work. You got to talk about his work. And he, and they, and if they did have something to do with, and all the that they happened, you know, the agency, we had, like in New York, we got the 30-30, we had the Dirty 30, we had the different law enforcement agency that was doing crooked sh and stuff like that. That happens everywhere. You get a full bad apples in any kind of situation. So, but if these guys had something to do with that, you understand, they could go back into their agency. Maybe they felt like they was going to be responsible. Then with all the other sh that was going on with the riots and all this other stuff like that, maybe they had to clear or maybe he had to say, yo, we can't see that we had any kind of part of this or any of our people had any part of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... I'm getting dirty looks right now, but go ahead. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll hurry up. Hey, um, hey Gene, do you feel um, the the story about Puffy uh, uh, asking Southside to do the thing the Tupac can show? Do you find any validity in that or not? What you say? Um, did Puffy did what now? Do you think he's talking about the? Movie? Yeah, do you think oh, yeah. he he had anything as far as with the Southside Crips to? have them do anything that Tupac and Shug, do you feel that that what Greg came No, 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 no. Let me just say, yep. it, it's, this, it's this kid that uh, is, is, he was a South Side Crip that Puff was close with, mm -hmm. and that was D-Mac. Not the David Mac, that's the police officer, another guy, right. D-Mac. Okay. Uh, that, that
you know, the whole nine yards. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I've heard, you know, man, I, man, my people, this, that, and the third, that's the same book. Okay. But for me to say that, you know, that Puff uh, would orchestrate anything with this kid to do anything against Shug and, and Tupac, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't say that. But I did hear Puff say something. I just thought that, like at the time, it was some kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. He was saying when he said, "I don't give the pot gotta die, I don't give the big gotta die, mm-hmm. or should go to jail." Mm-hmm. He was just that mad after that soul train. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? So you yeah. know, to say that I ever heard him, you know, to do something like that now, okay. have I heard the bullshit? Yeah, have I heard the bullshit. Mm-hmm. But I only heard it with around D Mac or whatever like that. Okay. Even when. I try to tell him the night that Big got killed. Man, we shouldn't go nowhere because two, two or three different gangsters told me that they was coming to get us. Hmm. So um, he said, yo, man, we lock and load together. I said, nigga, I don't see none of y'all locking and load. <laughs> what are you talking about? Listen, you the only one. Yeah. 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 Hey, um, do you believe, uh, what, what's your belief on Tupac? I know you don't like to speculate. Just like I don't like to really speculate on Big because I wasn't there. Um, but what, what's your opinion about Pop? Do you believe the Kiki D story or what? Well, you got to look at this. You got to go with behavior. And you got to listen to what transpires and, and, and what people say. You know, like, I don't believe that Kiki D then was going to kill Pop. And I told you, I don't believe that they was going... I believe, like, like they said, Orlando Anderson wanted a prayer one with him. Mm. I believe Keith D is being framed.